It's interesting. I was going to talk about uh, how to simplify, and we start off with actually two mics. So uh, thank you so much. It's wonderful being back here in IIT Kharagpur. And uh, it's amazing to be able to meet with all of you and be able to share some experiences that I've had having come back and worked at the intersection of technology and public health in India. And what I wish to be able to uh, first talk to you about was, um, it's interesting, when I got introduced as uh, Dr. Anand Sivraman, this was when I came back from MIT and my, I remember the way my mother used to introduce me. Uh, she used to say, you know, he's a doctor, not the kind that's very useful. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting because uh, doing research, one realizes very early, if especially your passion is technology and public health, it's needless to say that I have actually had the most of the satisfaction that I've had in the past nine to 10 years of actually working very closely with doctors to be able to identify gaps, especially in the area of public health where technology may have a role to play. So one of the key things that I'm gonna be talking to you about today is really to get you to reflect on the theme can we innovate to simplify? And can that simplification actually lead to large scale public health impact? This is something that I feel very strongly about having worked on technologies that can improve healthcare access at the bottom of the pyramid. Now it's not easy when someone says we need to innovate to simplify. And it's important for us to realize why that's needed in a context like India. It's important for us to be able to scale any solution, any technological solution, because without that scale, you're really not going to have that kind of public health impact. And without simplification, it's really not going to be possible for us to achieve that scale. And I hope to give some case studies that may possibly support this, and we can hopefully leave you with uh, some points to ponder on the relevance of what I'm talking about. So the problem statement that I would want to leave with you today is when we think in terms of diagnostic technologies or medical imaging technologies and medical devices, it's very well known. I'm sure all of you know that most of these devices uh, are designed in outside of India, specifically in uh, non-local contexts, usually in the West. And it's oftentimes a force-fit solution when you try to bring them back and deploy them in context, be it in tier two or tier three, or even in urban centers in India. Now, one thing that we are very clear about is one of those reasons is because it's very expensive, and I'm sure all of us can relate very easily to that. But there are some other aspects which I feel are equally important for us to consider. Many of these solutions, because they've been designed not in the local context, oftentimes have some features which lack what I call design relevance, meaning oftentimes, these are features that may not fit with the local needs associated with the use of these devices. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, this was when I came back, and this was in the year 2005. I went to a diagnostic lab in a tier two center. You can think of it as, let's say, a lab in Midnapur. And there was this lady there who was actually using a device similar to what you see there, which has this nice touchscreen interface. And she was actually entering some she had to enter some data, and she was responsible for making sure that uh, she can enter the data and then complete the diagnostic assay on such a system. As I was observing her, I realized that she was hardly using the touchscreen interface, and that touchscreen interface was actually around 30 to 40 percent of the cost of that equipment. And it was very interesting when she said that, look, I don't even have time to remove my bloodstained gloves, so it really didn't make sense for me to interact that way. And so what she would actually do is she would actually have a mouse connected to that so that she actually interacts with the mouse. This is interesting because in the West, this was designed in a manner where there was someone else or a certain technology that was responsible for collecting and removing samples, and someone else was responsible for actually interacting and using the samples in an assay. But cut to the Indian context, it's the same person doing both. So you can start seeing what I'm talking about design relevance and local context. Let's look at the second example that you see here. In this case, what you really think about is, we were going to tier two towns and tier three uh, uh, centers where we would actually take these bulky equipments like what you see here, in order to screen the eyes of patients or villagers in uh, 
rural India. And this is actually in rural Karnataka. Now, what is very interesting is not only are these systems very bulky, so we would have to actually transfer them and lug them around. But what's uh, interesting is all of them actually need a continuous supply of electricity that you see there. Now, when you go to tier two, tier three, the chances are that it's going to stop and it, you really can't stop your screening as a result of that. This is another example of what I call design relevance, where you need certain aspects or certain design aspects to be built into these devices for their relevance in the local context. And that's really what I talk about in terms of design relevance. Now, this is something that I want you to think about. It's what I call the central hypothesis, or what I feel is um, something that I feel very passionate about, and one of the main reasons why I feel any extremely energized about working in India. It is really using what I call the constraints in a developing nation context, not really as a challenge, but what if we look at it as an opportunity in a way? Yes, we have infrastructure-related issues with respect to access to skilled labor. We know that devices as well as the cost of healthcare has to be very low. We also know that the local needs are very different. But what if we use this as an opportunity to actually come up with something which is very different from what the West may have come up with as medical device solutions? And here I'm talking about technology solutions in healthcare where there is a relevance of diagnostic technologies to be able to create access in healthcare. So the premise that I'm going to pose to you is, is it possible for us to be able to define the problem locally in the local context, come up with a design that actually fits with the local context, but make sure that the outcome is of global quality, meaning the diagnostic technology has to produce results which are accurate enough so that it meets with the peers and the global quality while it actually considers the constraints posed as an opportunity to come up with a very new design that maybe the others may have not thought about. And that really has been my 10-year journey here in India. So here's a case study where I want to give you an example of a problem that we can actually define locally. We can also define the constraints. And one key thing is we are not going to re-engineer a solution, meaning we are not going to make something that's already available in, the, available in the West cheaper, but rather we're gonna ask ourselves, if we didn't know how it was developed in the West, how would we do this in India? And that's the case study that we're gonna go through right now. So here's the big picture. Throughout the world, there are more than 25 million who are at risk for a variety of visual impairments. And the sad part is nearly 39 million of them actually go blind annually. And 90% of them are actually in low-income countries. And the sad part is, 80% of this is actually preventable. These are actually diseases that you can actually reverse, or if you pick it up early, you can actually stop progression. Now, if you think of an Indian context for something like acute diseases, like cataract or corneal diseases, we have a load of almost 19 to 20 million people who actually are at risk for any of these diseases. And this number goes to around 20 to 21 million when you think in terms of what I call chronic diseases, like diabetic retinopathy or glaucoma, where you need to be screened over a period of time to ensure that you're not at risk for it. Now, what's the setting in an Indian context? The setting in an Indian context is you essentially have most doctors in three tiers. Either they are part of the public health care networks, where you may necess not necessarily have specialists. You possibly have remote tier two eye clinics. And of course, you have the urban infrastructure. The problem is the farther you are from the urban infrastructure, the lesser is the chance that you have access to diagnostic technologies that may actually be relevant for actually screening you out early for an indication. So what you really have is a case where a model of this sort, which exists in India, is responsible for less opportunity for people to get screened early. Therefore, there's a heavier load on our tertiary care. And more importantly, it creates a situation where you actually have preventable blindness on the rise. Now, is there a way by which you can actually think about this context, this problem, and ask ourselves, how would we actually come up with a solution that can invert this problem and come up with a solution that we may be able to scale all across India? So one of the ideas was, can we actually have diffusion of what we call screening technologies, a way by which you can actually take these high quality images that are today done in urban centers, in the rural areas, in the peripheral areas, 
yes, we cannot produce doctors and specialists overnight, but is there a way we can use our mobile networks to be able to then send these images across to specialists who may actually be remote and may not be actually co-located with where the patient is actually getting his images taken. So that's the fundamental hypothesis that we had for a solution that we felt would work within the constraints of the Indian context. Now, is this possible for us to do with the current systems that are imported in? Uh, not really, because A, they are very bulky. It's extremely difficult for you to think in terms of porting that across. B, it's highly complicated, lots of wires everywhere. It's not something that's very easy to use. And C, and this is the most important, especially when you need to start involving non-specialists to take images, it has to be something that's extremely simple to use. And current systems are not very intuitive and therefore are very difficult to actually uh, have someone get trained on very easily. So what we started asking ourselves was, uh, if you look at the pictures there, uh, that's a telephone I'm sure many of you know or may not know, depending upon uh, when you were born, but early 80s you had telephones of that sort with the rotary dials. Then we moved through the cordless technology to now smartphones. Now this is very interesting because a consumer device, be it whether it's in the West or India, because of the volumes, you actually have people working on innovating to make it simple because it has to be able to satisfy the needs of many. Now let's look at medical devices. Medical devices, unfortunately, have actually become very feature-rich, but on a scale of simplicity, I don't think they do as well as what we see as innovation on the side of, let's say, phones. And this is very interesting because I believe very strongly that the reason for this is because most of these technological innovations that have happened in the West have not required the need for large volumes of deployment. And herein there's an opportunity for us in developing nations like India to reverse this trend where we start innovating to ask the question, how do you bring in simplicity into these devices even as they become feature rich? So how do we actually innovate keeping simplicity in mind? So we asked ourselves, what if we were to take the physics of how the optics is done in all of these big bulky systems and marry that with the simplicity of a smartphone? Now this was not an easy or trivial exercise. It required us to rethink the way the optical design had to be done. And so we actually now have a patent on a very new kind of an optical design which works with any smartphone and allows you to take very high quality images of both the front of your eye as well as the back of the eye called your retina, called the retina. Now this, these are for example the images that the system takes. What it allows you to do is because of a natural uh, interface with the phone, you are able to use any of the standard apps to be able to make available the images wherever you want. It also allows for high quality images of both the front and the back of the eye to be taken. Now what's interesting is we didn't realize this when we got started, but it also turned out to be more affordable than the existing systems. So we didn't start off saying we wanted to make it affordable. We said we wanted to make it simple, but in making it simple, we were also able to make it affordable. Secondly, we were able to make it battery operated and less bulky and portable. It was also something which introduced a new type of interaction for the operator. Now this is very important because what we realized is this new type of interaction actually allowed for simplicity so that non-ophthalmologists or non-specialists now were able to start using the system very easily. Mind you, we had to do all this and it's important for us to realize that we still need good quality images because at the end of the day, the technology that is able to put out clinically useful information is really what would have an impact. Now, it's great from a technology perspective, but no technology is useful unless and otherwise you're able to think in terms of a novel model by which you can deploy this to actually have an impact. So one of the things that we've been working on is in uh, Maharashtra, where in 28 districts of Maharashtra, we've been working with a civil society group there, a local NGO. Uh, you actually have the mobilization for screening being done by uh, many of the volunteers of the NGO. We actually have the device taken by women volunteers of the NGO who actually go and take images. They then send these images through WhatsApp to a doctor who's actually not locally located but is many miles away remotely. And thereafter, we are able to then identify who needs treatment and where he needs to be taken for treatment. Now, what we also realized is 
you need to involve the local media in this as well. So the media reports on it and then talks more about awareness and screening as they identify more and more people who are picked up for indications that they didn't know about. Now this has a multiplicative effect because any one of us, I'm sure, if something comes to your doorstep and you have the convenience of actually having your eyes tested, you would really want to be able to do it. And that's what the involvement of the media enables us to achieve. Now what this was made possible by was not only because of the technology, but we actually had a clinical partnership with Vision India Foundation based in Pune who actually came up with the clinical protocols. We worked with the media group and we worked with the local uh, NGO who are able to now take the systems, they are our non-ophthalmologists who go into the field and are able to take these images and send them to ophthalmologists. Now, I want to spend some time on this slide which is really the points to ponder. What I'm hoping to be able to show you as a result of this example is the fact that you can define the problem locally, but you can execute globally. Now, what do I mean by that? Yes, we came up with the optical design, but that doesn't mean that we actually made the lenses here. We got the lenses made in Germany, we got the lenses, the best of lenses made in Singapore, and we also got some lenses that could be done in India done here. But we defined the problem locally, so we came up with the design locally. That was key. Secondly, we realized very early that affordability by itself cannot create access. You need to be able to match that affordability with two other things, and I feel very strongly about this. You need to be able to drive simplicity. You need to think about the use of these instruments beyond those who can be well-trained to use them. It has to be thinking about the less skilled. And finally, when one thinks in terms of healthcare access on a large scale, we need really ground up innovations, be it in technology side or on the side of uh, deployment or delivery. Unless and otherwise we can think in terms of these engineering innovations coupled with delivery innovations, it's very difficult for us to think in terms of being able to have the kind of impact that we're thinking of. So I'm gonna leave you with the same point that I started off with. Let's innovate to simplify. When we simplify, we can produce something that can be adopted on a large scale. And that in the final analysis is where we have a golden opportunity in a context like India to really come up with something that we can lead and actually have a huge public health impact in India. So with that, I thank you so, thank you so much and thank you so much for uh, uh, inviting me here and uh, glad that I could share some experiences with you over the past 10 years of what I've been working on at the intersection of technology and public health. Thanks.